I'm going to show you something which may lead you to feel like you have some warm and fuzzy feelings for Paul Ryan and I need you to just push those down. Okay, I need you to fight that feeling because what he's saying here is important and it's indicative of what part of the Republican Party feels and why they are so fractured and why the Democrats really need to capitalize on this. So Trump's not a conservative, he's an authoritarian narcissist. So I think they basically called him out for that. He's a populist authoritarian narcissist. So historically speaking, all of his tendencies are, you know, basically where narcissism takes him, which is whatever makes him popular, makes him feel good at any given moment. And he, and he doesn't think in, in, in classical liberal conservative terms, he thinks in, in an authoritarian way. And he's been able to get a, a, a big chunk of the Republican base to follow him because, you know, he's the culture warrior. And so I think Adam and Liz um, stepped out of the, the flow and called it out and, um, you know, paid for it, paid for it with their careers. But I think, again, back to my earlier point, I don't think you're really very good at these jobs unless you're willing to lose these jobs. And there has to be some line, some principle that is so important to you that you're just not going to cross so that when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror, you like what you see. Um, I think Adam and Liz are brushing their teeth like what they see. Um, and I think a lot of people in Congress, good friends of mine, who would take the vote back if they could. Because I think a lot of these members of Congress, you know, like on the second impeachment, they thought Trump was dead. They thought after General Dixon, he wasn't going to have a comeback. He was dead. So they figured, I'm not going to take this heat. I'm going to vote against this impeachment because he's gone anyway. But what's, what's happened is he's been resurrected. Um, there's lots of reasons for that, but he has been. So I think there's a lot of people who already regret not, you know, you know, getting them out of the, out of the, out of the way when, when they could have, you know, like an impeachment. Um, so I think history will be kind to those people who saw what was happening and called it out, even though it was at the expense of their personal well-being. First Dan Coulter, now Paul Ryan. Is Dick Cheney going to resurrect himself from the grave and become a liberal? What's happening? I'll tell you what's happening. People really thought that they could use Trump up to a point, right? And that point was fascism. That point was an authoritarian dictatorship. And then it became too much for some people. And they're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crap walk on out of here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quietly or not so quietly resign in some cases, because I don't want to be attached to this. A lot of people, including the Democrats, really banked on the fact that if Trump lost to Biden, that he was going to be done. No more career for him. So everything Paul Ryan is saying here is accurate. And it's also indicative of the fact that there is this fracture in the Republican Party, which the Democrats should try to exploit. Because Project 2025, whether you feel it's fear mongering or not, does exist and has existed and has been a calculated plan on part of Republicans, a, a, a fracture of Republicans for quite a while. The Democrats can't replicate a progressive version of that in one election cycle. So obviously that's going to take time. Unfortunately for them, the voters are already impatient and frustrated because they feel like they've had to wait decades for this plan to emerge. So this video is supposed to bring you two things. One is hope. Hope that other people see that Trump is a raging narcissist. Okay, like we're not being gaslit. It's really happening, yeah? And there is at least a section of Republicans that see that and agree, whether they want to say it out loud or not. And two, which is less hopeful, um, Trump's career is not dead and buried. Uh, he has been resurrected and Paul Ryan is right. He's still a threat to this country because you can't miss the bear. You can't miss the bear. And if you got that reference, let me know. Oh, and actually there's a third point, which is now there's going to be a lot of Republicans that are crawling out of the woodworks trying to pretend like they've always been reasonable people this whole entire time and they knew that the Trump threat was there. And I just encourage you to revisit a thing called the internet that for some reason they think we don't have. It's this great little time machine that can take you back in history and show you that they're all liars and they're just capitalizing on the fact that they think we don't remember. So it's okay if you started to feel warm and fuzzy about Paul Ryan, but now you can just go back to the internet and remember why that's not a thing.